You know, one of the first things new patients notice when joining the PA program is the sheer volume of packaging wrapped around most of these cannabis products. Now the regulations describe packaging and labeling requirements for the growers. And there seem to be quite a uh, number of ways that folks have decided to solve the problem. Some I would say more successful than others. But now it's starting to finally warm up outside, right? And we want to be able to enjoy all this lovely nature. And that means it might be time to start thinking about how to get rid of all of this without it destroying all of that outside. So the real question is, what are we able to throw out? Is anything recyclable or biodegradable? And are there any special legal requirements or procedures we have to do regarding the disposal of this Schedule One substance packaging material? Well, I'm Scott Goddard, and this is The Daily Dose, and today we're going to get recycled. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Welcome, friends. I really hope you do enjoy this, and please consider subscribing if you do. And in front of me today, we have quite a few piles of the leftover packaging from our PA NMJ market. Now, some of you may have areas like this in your own personal lives, right? Little areas where your packaging has collected in the corners of your rooms. And it does seem like there is quite a bit of extra packaging on our products. So although we do find it extraneous as patients, there are some dang good reasons that packaging rules are required. You know, the entire program really has a theme of patient safety in the regulations. And although a lot of us are familiar with cannabis, given not every patient has years of experience with these things. And just like with any medication, you know, the contents and the potency must be clearly displayed. Now, any medication like cannabis that has such a high potential effect on the memory I'm kind of a person who feels like big old clear labels are a blessing in disguise for the times we sort of medicate and might forget what we're doing. So as we said, you know, the program is focused on responsible adult use, patient safety, and we know some patients are minors out there, but we want to make sure we avoid the risk of any child who's a non-patient from consuming by accident any controlled substance unknowingly, because that will create obvious problems, not only for the individual, but for the program at large. So there is a requirement for every container to have what is sort of like a child safety lock, something to make it hard to open so it doesn't just fall open. I can say some of these uh, concentrate containers really, oh, yeah, I feel like they're kind of adult proof on top of that. So it makes a dull task feel a little sharp with, uh, on a cold day. Now, some of these growers have thankfully thought ahead and have considered using packaging that is a little bit friendlier to our mother Gaia. So some might be biodegradable, some we can put in the recycling stream. And so we're going to take a look at which ones are friendly, how, with recycling process. Uh, I will tell you what, as I looked into this, uh, the man behind the cam, Tim, let me know in a little secret about recycling, something that was going on that I was not aware of, really surprised me. And at the end, we're going to go over what I believe is a millions, if not billion dollar opportunity buried in all of this recycling possibility. So. Without further ado, let's start off and take a look at what is hopefully the easiest thing to consider recycling in PNMJ, which is paper products, right? Leftover paper stuff. Uh, it seems it comes from, you know, some different GPs. They'll have some extra things that you can separate out and get rid of the boxing. And uh, these can be placed with your general paper recycling products. Anyway, uh, most of them are recyclable. However, uh, for a pro tip, because again, responsible use, but also we want private use for our medical things. Uh, if you have a label on anything, be sure to try to peel that off. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody's information to get out there uh, without them wanting it. So that's one of the things, usually remove your labels before you throw it out. Easy way to keep your name out of the trash as well. Now, given paper products, I think are a little easy, so we don't have to worry too much about them, but there is actually some glass, thankfully. And glass is one of the easiest things to recycle if it's glass, it really can continue onward and onward. Glass and metal have a lot of life in them that can go through recycling. So uh, Cresco Reserve, that's a glass container. It's a good way to go. We also have the bottoms of a lot of the dab containers. Uh, some of them are going to be clear, 
But uh, like this Prime Wellness one, it's got like a frosted bottom and you can hear right there, those are all glass. So we have quite a few glass things that uh, the bottoms at the very least are glass you can recycle, the tops are plastic. So always worth investigating to see if that could also go in the same bin. And uh, also another great one, uh, some standard farm syringes are made out of glass. Now, not every syringe is glass, but uh, if you find one that kind of makes that telltale sign, remove that little plastic piece and uh, the stopper, and you have a nice piece of glass that can enter the stream. Uh, this would be an example of a plastic syringe. So they're not all glass, but always make sure to check what's in your hand. Now, another great one for those of you who like the, uh, the tinctures and medicate with the tinctures, all the bottles of tinctures are made out of glass in our market, from what I'm aware. Uh, they might be brown glass. We have some frosted glass ones behind me. Uh, of course, the dropper itself has some rubber and plastic to separate out, but usually the stem on the inside Oh, so I can get it in there. This little sucker, that is also made out of glass. So that is very recyclable, but that does bring up a very good point. And this is what Tim let me know about. So apparently there's a huge thought process in recycling, and that is clean trash versus contaminated trash. And really in recycling, it's kind of clean plastics, paper, glass, or metal versus contaminated. Now, I think contamination is something we all thought about before, right? And the days before uh, medical cannabis or legal cannabis at all, you're always hoping nobody ever sprayed what you might have acquired with anything untoward. And so recyclers apparently think the same. If I have uh, a dab container or an old tincture bottle and I want to throw that glass into the recycling stream, what I need to be aware of is that I have to clean it. Now, this is something that we may have thought about just because we're medical patients and some folks may ask, uh, am I allowed to throw anything out? You know, it's a question we do get from a lot of uh, new members to the program. And it's a consideration because we don't want any of this controlled substance getting into a dumpster. You know, Tasty Cake used to have the problem where people dumpster dive at certain days of the week and get quite a bit of free, slightly out of spec food. And uh, we don't want anybody jumping in your trash can thinking they can try to get a head full with your leftovers. So one of the reasons why cleaning is good is just good old responsible use of your medication. Don't let anybody think they can get anything from you for free. But the second major reason, an even better reason for some of you potentially is, they won't recycle it. This is like crazy me because I am that classic dude who gets the pizza box and I feel diligent. You know, it's just some cheese and a crust left in there and I put that right in the recycling bin thinking I'm, you know, doing the planet a favor. And apparently, once the organic matter, once oils or controlled substances penetrate into whatever you're recycling, they can't recycle it. It contaminates the whole process. So from an individual level, keep in mind that if you're, you know, you're throwing away a container like Terrapins, nice recyclable container, and it still has some crumbs of the medicine left in there, you got to clean it out for two reasons. One, so nobody gets it, but two, because they will actually, it'll just become regular trash at that point. All of your good intentions gone to waste. Now, this is something that we find in medical marijuana, but this exists in everything. You know, soda bottles, water bottles. If you leave a little bit in the bottom, it technically won't be recycled. And even beyond that, the thing that really blew my mind is that not only may it not be recycled individually, but let's say this tincture bottle full of oil gets into a pallet full of other uh, glass bottles. It will contaminate the rest of them. If I take a non-recyclable, uh, I would say it's not recyclable, but if I had something that is not able to go into the recycling stream and it got into the recycling stream, it would contaminate all the other recyclable things and then they couldn't be recycled. So it's actually a lot more of a fine line than I thought. I thought, hey, throw it in there, you know, kind of the good intentions will work out, but it is more of a laser focus. You really have to clean it and know that it is recyclable. So that's something that I'll want everybody to keep in mind. Because as we are trying to keep nature clean, you know, cannabis comes from nature. So it's only going to help keep cannabis clean as well. If we ever get to a rec market and consider outdoor grows, we want to make sure the soil actually still has some good life in it that can provide these plants, you know, a good environment in which to prosper. So just like if a box of stink bugs fell into a sausage grinder, you would hope all the sausage gets thrown out. If any medicine or food or other contamination gets into the recycling stream, they also throw out all the things affected, i.e. Amazon style shipping box. Perfect. But melted food clamshell from last night's dinner, it's not going to be recyclable. And that's something that nobody really told me. So at least we can all learn together. So wipe it clean, keep it clean, 
However, beyond paper and glass, you know, the easier things that we have up here, well, what else is there that we have available? And it looks like we have this one big area, which are the flower containers are mainly made out of polymers and plastics, right? So here we have a couple actually that are metal, some unique ones, uh, Primonis started using the tuna can, uh, I think Calypso also, tuna can. And uh, another good example, inside with their tuna can. So these are great ones. Again, remove the lid, clean it out, and you have some good metal you can stuck, stick into the recycling stream. So some other good ones. Whenever you see metal, it's an easy thing to recycle, just like glass. Then we go into the real middle ground, right? All the plastics. And thankfully, most plastics in our market are recyclable. You can clean them properly, but all you got to do is go turn it over and look at the bottom. Uh, I have here two terrapin containers. They have a number two with a little recycling symbol on them. So it looks like, you know, those most likely will fit the bill. Uh, Moxie, actually, funny enough, it looks like black plastic, but that sucker is glass. So the top lid is going to be one side of recycling, the glass container on the other side. Just keep that in mind. Agrikind here, they have a number one on the bottom of theirs, uh, PET recycling, so it's partially recyclable. So make sure to put those in the stream as well. And then I believe somebody I can really herald, thinking ahead in this recycling game, uh, is Grassroots. They employed packaging that says 100% recyclable on the bottom, and it's actually uh, number five in the stream. So it looks like ever better packaging and recycling potentials there. Everybody's got a number, but these all seem so far hmm, to be at least partially recyclable at worst. So clean them out, put them into the recycling bin, make sure you remove any labels that uh, you don't want the attention for. And a lot of these things seem like candidates. But there is one last crux we want to talk about. And it's probably the two toughest things to recycle in our market. And that is vapes. Vape pens, batteries, vape cartridges create a nuisance because not only is the packaging that houses them need to be recycled, but then the items themselves aren't very recyclable. So first off the batteries, right? It might be a pen battery like this, or sometimes you have a dart battery. And these are going to be a mixture of things, right? You have some plastics on them potentially in the wires, copper in the wiring, lithium, aluminum in the chassis. Yeah, you know, it's a kaleidoscope of materials. And so if you ever want to do anything with rechargeable batteries and recycling them, uh, the best thing is to check online. You know, something that I had to do for the research because it isn't really that easy to find a one-off box that's clearly labeled. And so a little blurb that I found uh, in the sort of, I think it was Montgomery County's website, they said, uh, and I quote, all rechargeable batteries can be taken to any household hazardous waste event, which of course COVID made a little thin for recycling or put in drop boxes. And so pay attention here. They're located at the entrances of most Home Depots, Lowe's, Staples, and some electronics retail stores like batteries plus bulbs. To find a location near you, please visit call to recycle backslash US, and that's the number two. For the recycling of rechargeable batteries, we'll put a link down in the description so you can check that out in case you have, you know, in my life, at least batteries die usually between one and three months. For a $10 battery, it's a pretty solid value. But once they die, the big question is, you know, just like regular double A's, where do they go? What do we do with them? And ideally, uh, they are a specialty disposal. You have to make a call or time it up with an event to be able to get rid of them. However, you know, bundle them up for a little bit. We don't, we want to make sure that nothing's exploding for trash men. Uh, we've probably all seen some of those horrible videos and we want to make sure that everybody keeps safe, not just ourselves. But if that takes care of the batteries, then we have one more item on the docket. Carts, cartridges, vape carts, they are probably the bane of the market because they are not recyclable. They have parts of them, sometimes some glass and plastic, some metal, some rubber. It is a lot of intimate, tiny pieces interacting. But the main thing is the oil on like a used cart. You can probably see a little bit of that color in here. Uh, it is embalmed everything. It has become a part of some of those plastics. And as we said with contamination, everything in here is contaminated when it's a used cart. That means if I need this to go down into a trash can, they will never be able to use it. And it might also contaminate other things. So vape carts, I mean, I'm not really sure how you would ever clean inside of that window you know, for disposables. Similar issue. There's medicine in there and it's 
pretty much impossible to access or get out completely. So this is really where this opportunity comes in for those of you who are creative and innovative out there because first one to figure out how to make these things recyclable or valuable beyond their disposable use uh, is probably going to be a millionaire. You know, we've all probably spent a couple of lofty nights thinking about how exactly that could be done. Do you boil them? Do you cook them? Do you break them into tiny parts? But uh, it's something that you have to work, of course, with our regulatory bodies to make sure that they allow for that. But that really is that opportunity. You know, it is right now a detriment, but it may become, you know, lemons in the lemonade if somebody out there can think of it to drive even the prices down for some of the hardware we have to pay for. But vape carts are one of the hardest things to deal with. So given all this other beautiful packaging we have in front of us and the ways we can creatively be able to reduce its impact on the environment, you know, vape carts is really where the victory lies. If we can figure that out, not only is it for cannabis, but all vape carts across the board can benefit from that effort. Now that covers a lot of ideas around recycling and certainly there are other ones we can think of, but we'll leave it there for today. Now, if you enjoyed this or found any of it useful, please make sure to hit the notifications bell and subscribe. That way you'll always see when new videos are available. And also keep an eye out uh, as you hit that notification bell because we're planning on having maybe a little uh, video come out about ways you can creatively use some of this packaging to be able to repurpose it and uh, maybe help yourselves out create little things. One thing I noticed that you may see in that video upcoming is a way that you can use these Cresco containers because if you ever want to store a vape pen well, well, let me just give you a little preview of some good ideas we have coming towards you. Now, besides that and beyond this, you know, recycling is actually supposed to be the last resort. If you look at the little triangle, reduction and reusing are actually the first two things to try out before recycling. So that's one reason why our video is going to come out. But keep it in mind as you use things too, if you have any good ideas on how to use this, please send them in to us. Hit us on Instagram, hit us on our website, send an email into our info. We'd love to hear what your ideas are in case any of you have gotten creative on top with some of these uh, extra packages left over. As we know, we really want to keep the environment good and keep Mother Gaia producing the best cannabis possible. So thank you very much for joining me today. I'm Scott from the Daily Dose Desk, hoping you get to hug a tree and tell it how much you love it. Be well, my friends. See you next time.